I want to talk you through my exact approach to creating a very simple framework. This is one of my favorite shortcuts when it comes to feeling more confident with how much you're ordering from the wholesalers, creating work that you love, and making money in your floral design business. Before I walk you through my super simple framework, I would love to hear from you and throw an emoji down in the comment section below if you are anything like me and you always find yourself overbuying at the market or completely stressed out because you don't really have a plan, so then you're just spinning out of control. Hello friend, my name is Kathleen and welcome to the greatest little corner of the internet. I am here to help you navigate all of the overwhelm and teach you the basics in terms of creating a successful flower business. You are in exactly the right place if you are an ambitious floral designer on a mission to build profitable business and learn everything in terms of marketing, money, and managing your mindset. And what I want to walk you through today has been one of the favorite kind of shortcuts that I created in my own design process. Now I know everybody hates the term systems, but I love it because as a creative, it is very easy to be completely overwhelmed and stuck in decision fatigue. Being able to create systems for yourself, even if they're shortcuts, if they're three-step processes, whatever you want to call them, makes it so easy for you to really channel your creativity, get focused on what matters most, and have a repeatable process so that you can make sure you're ordering from the wholesalers, that you have the right ingredients, and for me, this was how I bridged the gap from just creating work that was okay to creating work that I could do very quickly because it was based off of my thinking and the outcome was always so good because there was the thought process put in up front. And it's super helpful, even if you're brand new, or for those of you that have been in business for a long time, feel free to take this concept and make it your own and apply it to every single design that you want to create. The goal with this system or framework that I'm going to teach you is twofold. The first one is to invite you to the world of simplicity. I know in our industry that there's a lot of different software solutions and everybody's kind of pitching their proposals and their templates and all those different widgets and we totally think that that's going to help solve our problem. But whether or not you use a piece of software to help with your orders from the wholesalers, I highly recommend that you you adopt this framework because it really is about bridging the gap between the final list of ingredients that you send to your wholesaler or what you just pick up off the floor at the market and that original vision that you have for what you want to create. It's like we have an idea in our mind, we know we need to have a very specific list of ingredients, but how do we go from here to here? Because when I first started it was always about just following the direction of the customer and that's what we're taught at flower school. But then inevitably you either hit burnout or you go resentful. <laughs> You're like, I thought I was supposed to like my job, but basically you've just turned into a servant. So this is how I have bridged the gap between here's the kind of work I want to create and what do I need to order from the wholesalers and how do I make sure that I do that with confidence? That's the whole point of why I created this framework for myself was to make sure that I knew I was ordering enough. I knew that if something wasn't available, swaps became super simple. And at the end of the day, I also knew that what I was ordering was going to help me make money. For those of you that have been around for a while, you know that I went through a phase of my business where I didn't know that a floral design recipe was a thing. I literally had no idea. I thought florists were able to just look at a picture and somehow magically the wave of some sparkly wand just create that design and somehow they automatically knew that they were going to be making money. They knew exactly how to create the work that they wanted to create and it was just some intuitive creative process. I struggled for a long time until I had a freelancer come in and she said, hey, so where's your recipe? And I was like, my what, what? If you don't know what a floral design recipe is, that's okay. I didn't for a very, very, very long time. But what I used to do was I would just kind of guess. I would just go to the market and I'd buy a bunch of these and a bunch of that and a bunch of this over here and I had zero structure in place. And then when it came to actually doing the design, I would just try to follow my intuition and make sure that everything looked good. 
However, most of the time I got really frustrated. It would take me a really long time to design things and I would inevitably keep overstuffing my designs. And that overstuffing erodes your profitability. So the end result of this framework is all about creating a repeatable system so that you can start to develop a design aesthetic that feels consistent. And one of the things that I found really helpful was if you could bring in a freelancer, it doesn't even matter if they're super experienced, but this idea that you can start to bring somebody else into your team, you've done so much of the creative thinking and then you can actually have more people helping you create this work. And that is how we go from, you know, burning the candle at both ends in our business to how do I even start to let go of control? Because that for me was such a big thing because I was convinced, well, none of them are gonna be able to create the work that I want them to create until I created this framework. Over time, you're gonna create such a repeatable behavior, such a repeatable system in your business that it will blow your mind. <laughs> It, the fact that all of a sudden planning recipes and sorting through ingredients and understanding how much to buy from the wholesalers is fun. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. For many of us, sometimes it's the most stressful thing on the planet because you're like, this is the make or break. This is where everything hinges on my creativity and I need to make sure I can predict the future and exactly what's gonna be in season. Even if it is in season and you have a great wholesaler and they say to you, hey, we got these in, but the quality's not there, we're not gonna give them to you. This system is gonna teach you how to have an easy swap, knowing, hey, okay, super simple, super easy. This is totally manageable. Like it cuts down on your stress by so much. Most importantly, you'll know that you're going to the wholesaler, buying the ingredients that you want to buy. Everything is pre-budgeted, everything is pre-planned. It's a floral designer's dream. So what I want you to do is put your creative hat on and I want you to create for yourself a floral framework. I like to think of this as the structure that's gonna get you from reference photo to final list of ingredients. And I've just made up the term floral framework. I think it sounds cute because who doesn't love a little bit of alliteration? However, you can call it whatever you want. What I want you to do is find a reference image of whatever it is that you wanna create. Could be something that you find on Instagram, Pinterest. It could be something you created in the past. It could be this picture here. <laughs> you find a picture of what you want to create, then every time I go to create a recipe, I know that I need to have a mix of focal flowers and filler ingredients. Now I know that other people teach line flowers and they teach secondary flowers and they teach little satellite flowers and everybody kind of has their own language around it, but I am the queen of simplicity. So I just go focal, filler. Also, if you're a person who loves foliage, you could go focal filler foliage. Again, more alliteration makes it fun. <laughs> I know that I have created just out of practice and enough paying attention and learning from my own experience that Kathleen is most satisfied when she creates a design that has between five and seven ingredients, but in most cases it's going to be three fillers and three focals. And that's what I mean by a floral framework. I have created this framework because after 500 weddings, I was like, hey, I think by wedding 492, I might have finally <laughs> gotten the hang of it. But I wanted to present this idea to you because I wish somebody had presented to me on wedding number one <laughs> instead of wedding number 491. So creating your floral framework is a very personal thing. This is where you are the creative director in your business and you get to look at a reference picture of a design that you love and then I want you to go into it. I want you to identify how many focal flowers are there and how many filler flowers are there. And if you're a floral designer that loves to use different language, do not change your language. Stick to your own language. If you're the kind of designer that loves to have focal flowers, line flowers, and foliage, go for it. Whatever language works for you, but your floral framework is going to be based off not even thinking about specific ingredients. Again, you don't even need to worry about color palette at this point in time. It's almost like just looking at the surface area of the design and going, okay, so I see three focal flowers and I see three or four filler flowers. That becomes your floral framework. No doubt you're probably going to have a slightly different framework for each design format that you offer, but you can follow exactly the same principle. So I know for table arrangements particularly, I love simplicity. So for Kathleen, it's probably going to skew more towards five different ingredients in total, two focals, three 
fillers. I know for bridal bouquets, I am probably gonna want to have seven ingredients, but even in that case, it's three focals and four filler ingredients. Now, as I said before, you don't have to use fancy technology. You don't have to have the most expensive stem counting software. If you're not a Google Sheets fan and you wanna have a piece of software, go for it. But I have found in almost all cases, I needed a shortcut for myself in terms of being able to understand how do I go from photo to wholesale order? And then how do I go from photo to recipe? to wholesale order. And for me, this was the missing piece of the puzzle of forget the ingredients for a second, just start to look at focals versus fillers. And over time, the more designs that you make and the more time you spend reflecting on what you like and what you don't like about what you just created, the more repeatable this system's going to be for yourself. And the more confidence you're gonna have that when the wholesaler says this wasn't available, you'll be like, oh, okay, no problem. I need a filler and a texture that's this color palette. Easy as that. I know that so many of us are so against the idea of systems because we think that they're boring, <laughs> but I really want you to know that they are one of the most amazing ways to create designs that you actually like. And your systems do not need to be the most complicated, tech savvy, amazing, color coded things on the planet. <laughs> your systems can be this simple, like developing a flower framework for yourself. So if you've ever created something that you love, go back, create the framework so that you can repeat it again and again and again, and then you can just apply it in different color palettes and even better, you can apply it in different color palettes and different seasons. So as always, my friends, I hope that this has been helpful. If you can leave a little emoji below or let me know what part of this training you love the most, that would be super duper helpful. I'm on a mission to make sure every floral designer on the planet has the resources and the tools that they need to bust through and show up with confidence in their business. And I would love to hear from you. So leave your questions, leave your comments down below. And my friends, please take care of yourself and have the most amazing week. Bye for now.